Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In my video today I'm going to be talking you guys how to properly and safely heat your reptile cages. Now I guess this could also apply to other animals such as like hedgehogs or really any animals that need additional heating. Although for the most part those animals that do require heating devices are reptiles but this can apply to any animal out there who needs some sort of heat lamp or heat pad or whatever. So depending on what kind of animal you have you may require different heating devices such as as a heat pad or heat tape or a heat lamp or a ceramic heat emitter. I'm not going to be telling you guys which ones to use in this video because that obviously depends on what type of animal you have and what their needs are. So make sure you are researching what heating device is best for your specific animal. I am just going to be going over how to use these devices safely to ensure that your animals are heated properly and there's minimal risk to anyone you know you don't want to risk your animals getting burned you don't want to risk anything catching on fire or anything like that so I'm just going to be talking to you guys about some things that I think you should probably know when using heating devices in order to use them safely so ensuring that your animals heating devices are being used safely is important for multiple reasons the first one being is your animals safety if you have a heating device and you're not using it safely or properly there is always the risk that your animal can burn itself on the heating device which you never want to happen obviously and also there is the risk that your device could even start a fire which could not only affect your animals but it could also affect you and your house so that is obviously something else we want to avoid as i said earlier in the video i'm going to be discussing heat pads slash heat tape and overhead heating such as heat lamps and ceramic heat emitters and i'm going to go ahead and start with heat pads under the tank heating and then I will cover overhead heating later so if you just want to see the overhead heating skip to this time right down here if you just want to see overhead heating but if not if, if you want to learn about under tank heating as well then stick around and we will get right into it. So a very common heating device used with reptiles is a heat mat, which you see here. So this specific heat mat is just by the brand Zoomed. This is one that I happen to use quite often. So this is this heat mat. These are used for tons of different animals, such as like leopard geckos, ball pythons, corn snakes, amphibians, really anything. You can use heat mats for so many different animals. So I think it's definitely important to talk about how to use these safely because there is risks when using these. The very first tip I have to safely using heat mats is to always, always, always use a thermostat. So this here is a thermostat that I have. It's all, it's brand new, still just came out of the package, so it's all tied up. But this here is a thermostat and this is the heat pad. So you should really always be using these together. When you have a heat pad or heat tape for that matter, this everything I'm saying here does apply to heat tape as well, but when you are using one of those devices you should always hook it up to a thermostat for multiple reasons. The first one being your animal safety. If you have a heat mat and it is not connected to a thermostat, there is no way for the heat mat to regulate its temperature. It can get up to 150 degrees, which is hot enough to burn some reptiles. So unregulated heat mats can burn reptiles. There is so many cases where a reptile has been burned because their heat mat gets too hot. So that is always something you want to avoid. Also, if your heat mat gets too warm, it not only risks burning your animal, but it can also burn the surface that the heat mat is on, which can potentially lead to things such as fires. So using a thermostat is very important when using heat mats and heat tape not only will it keep your animals safe but it will help to keep both like you and your house and your family members safe as well so when you're using a thermostat with your heat pad there is going to be an area where you plug your heat mat into which you can see right here this is where I plug my heat mat into and then I can take my thermostat and set it to the desired temperature for example you could set it to 95 degrees and then you will take the probe 
that comes with the thermostat. I mean, it should be attached. This here is the probe on this thermostat. You will place the probe on top of the heat pad in your animal's warm area, and that probe will help to measure the temperature and ensure that your thermostat keeps your heat pad at the desired temperature. So for example, if you have it set to 95 degrees, it should keep it just around 95 degrees. A lot of them have a little bit of variance, so it could be 93 degrees or 96 degrees, but they will always keep them around the set temperature. The next thing to know is make sure you're using your heating pad properly. So these under tank heat pads like you see here are designed to go on the outside of your reptiles enclosure. Whether you're using a tank or a bin or whatever you're using, these heat pads are designed to go on the outside. These heating pads are not meant to go inside your cages. Your reptile should never be able to have direct contact with your heat mat. So always make sure that you are using these properly. They are designed to go on the outside of the tank. So make sure you're doing that. You don't want to stick it inside the cage. It is unsafe to the reptile. It can damage your heat mat. So please <laughs> don't do that. If you happen to be using something such as a wooden vivarium where heating can't go on the outside the next best thing to do is to get heat tape and stick it inside the cage but then you have to put some sort of barrier on it such as shelf liner you can put so I don't have anything to show you for this example but if you could imagine you have your cage and then you put the heat tape there and then you put the shelf liner on top of it so that way it still ensures that there is a barrier in between the heat mat and your reptile your reptile does not have direct access to the heat tape so there is less risk there so make sure you are using things safely heat mats such as this are always designed to go on the outside of the cage so please make sure you are doing it I have seen posts before where people put a heat mat in their cage and then put just put substrate on top of that please 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 don't do this this is not safe even with a thermostat there is so many risks involved with putting a heat mat inside of your cage such as if your reptile has direct Direct contact to it but if your probe accidentally gets moved and then your heat mat heats up a ton and your reptile can directly touch this it can get burned so easily plus having substrate directly on top of a heat mat is also a huge fire risk and if your substrate has any moisture in it it can damage the heat mat which can be also a fire risk so please just don't use these inside of the cages it is very unsafe for multiple reasons so please make sure you are doing things properly make sure you are using these heat pads on the outside of the cage and not on the inside. When you are using a heat pad, you will most likely slip it underneath of the cage and then you will have the cord from the heat mat sticking out. Always make sure that when you place your heat mat underneath of the cage, whether it be a tank or a bin or whatever, there is a gap there. And by that I mean it should never just be directly like your heat mat on your cage and then the cage directly on the floor. There is then no gap to allow for airflow, which is very important when you're using a heat pad. So please always make sure there is a gap. Without a gap the heat can build up underneath the cage which can be a huge fire risk. It can risk burning the tank. It can risk the heat mat burning itself. It can risk the heat mat burning the surface that the tank is sitting on. So there's definitely a lot of risks there. So please always make sure that there is a gap between um, your tank and the surface so that air can flow through and so that the heat mat doesn't overheat underneath the tank and in between the surface. Another reason it is important to have a gap between your tank and the surface it is sitting on is for the cord of your heat pad and so that doesn't get damaged. If you do not have any gap and the tank is sitting directly on the cord which is there for squishing the cord in between the tank and the surface that can be very dangerous. Having the weight of the tank sitting and pushing on top of the cord can be very damaging. It can damage the cord which can can lead to the heat mat failing to work therefore your reptile would not be getting the proper heat that it needs and it can also be a big fire hazard to have a damaged cord like this. So in order to make sure your heat mat keeps working and that there's no fire risk there 
always make sure that there is a safe gap for the heat pad cord to go out of. Always make sure your tank is never sitting directly on top of the cord. Now a lot of reptile cages that you buy in stores are designed to accommodate this. For example, exoterras are designed to do this. Their cages are designed with a gap underneath of them and an area for um, a cord to come out of. So if you're using something such as a fish tank or a bin, these are not designed to have the space for a heat mat underneath, so you will have to kind of modify that yourself. This is extremely easy to do. You can take little sticky pads and put them on the corners of your bin or your tank, and this will ultimately raise the tank up a little bit, therefore allowing you to put your heat mat underneath of the cage safely. I've done this in the past with my bin cages that I've used. This is very easy to do. The little pads you have to get can cost just a few dollars so it's very affordable, very simple, and it will help to make sure that your reptile is being heated safely. That is definitely something I recommend doing. The last thing I have to recommend when it comes to using under the tank heating devices such as heat mats and heat tape is to always have a thermometer. You can use different things such as like these digital thermometers thermometers here or you can also use heat guns but these will just help you to make sure all of your temperatures are being monitored. You can take these thermometers and place the probe right over your warm spot and make sure that all of the temperatures are staying correct. Now if you have a thermostat like I said you should before the thermostat should already help make sure that your temperatures are staying correct but it never hurts to have a thermometer as well just to make sure you can monitor your temperatures. In the rare occasion that your thermostat is isn't working properly if you have a thermometer to check as well that will let you know and then you will know that you need to get either a new thermostat or a new heat mat in case one of them isn't functioning properly so I always recommend having a way to monitor your temperatures to make sure everything is staying the way that it should be so now that we have talked about under the tank heating I'm going to go ahead and talk about overhead heating. So overhead heating consists of things such as heat lamps, this here is a heat bulb, and ceramic heat emitters which is what you see here, this is a ceramic heat emitter. And these are also used on all sorts of reptiles, specifically those who need overhead heating, those who like to bask, for example, bearded dragons and blue tongue skinks. Obviously there are a ton of other animals who also utilize overhead heating. The first thing I have to say when it comes to safely using overhead heating devices is to make sure that your lamp fixture is designed to hold heat bulbs or ceramic heat emitters. So for example, this light fixture that you see here is specifically designed to be used with heating devices. This isn't just some lamp that I picked up at Walmart. If you are using a lamp that isn't designed to hold heating devices, there are always risks there. So always make sure you're using one that is designed to handle heat. The next thing I want to say when it comes to using overhead heating is to make sure that your lighting fixture can accommodate the watt bulb you have. So when it comes to overhead heating devices, they come in all sorts of different wattages and different wattages put out different amounts of heat. So for example, this little bulb that you see here is just a 50 watt heat bulb. So it puts out a fairly low amount of heat. And then this one that I have here is a 250 watt heat bulb. So this one will put out very intense heat. So when you're using these light bulbs or ceramic heat emitters, always make sure that the fixture that you are using can accommodate the correct wattage of your bulb. So for example, this fixture that I have right here is designed to accommodate up to 750 watts. It says on the sticker right inside here that it can accommodate up to 75 watts. And this bulb here is a 50 watt heat bulb, so I can safely use these together. I can safely put this 50 watt heat bulb inside of this 75 watt lamp and there is going to be a reduced risk of fire whereas if I was going to take the 250 watt heat bulb and stick it inside this lamp even though I don't think it would fit but even if I were to do it that would be very risky as this lamp is only designed to accommodate up to 75 watts and this bulb is 250 watts so that would very much increase the risk of something going wrong. <laughs> So if I want to use this 250 watt bulb, 
I need to make sure that I have a fixture which accommodates up to 250 watts so that I can use this bulb safely. This fixture that I have here does accommodate up to 250 watts. It says right on the bulb. So I can safely take this bulb and use it with this fixture with minimal risk. When you're using an overhead heating device, always make sure that your heat lamp or ceramic heat emitter is a safe distance away from your reptile. Whether your heat lamp is mounted inside of your cage or outside of the cage, if your reptile can get too close to that heating lamp, they can risk seriously burning themselves which is very dangerous for them you always want to make sure that your heating device is a safe distance away from your reptile so that they do not injure themselves on them if your reptile is able to get very close to your heat lamp or ceramic heat emitter you definitely need to move it away if you need to move it up higher you can get things such as lamp stands so that you can raise the light a little higher or if you have decor in your tank that reaches right up to the top right below the heat bulb you should probably remove that to make Make sure they can't get up as high whatever you're doing just make sure that your reptile cannot directly access the heating device because if they can if they can access it or if they can get too close they can burn themselves on it so always make sure that your heating device is a safe distance from your reptile when you're using things such as ceramic heat emitters or heat lamps always make sure that they are not close to anything that they could possibly catch on fire such as curtains if you have maybe a tank in your house and it's maybe up against the wall and you have curtains right behind it and your heat lamp is right there that can be a big fire risk so always make sure that your heat lamp is a safe distance away from anything in your house that could easily catch fire like I said for example curtains that's just the first thing that came to mind but really anything that it could easily catch on fire you want to keep it away from and now I mentioned these when we were talking about the heat mats, but thermostats. You can also use thermostats with overhead heating devices such as ceramic heat emitters. They work the exact same. You hook it up to the thermostat, you put the probe in the cage where you need it to measure the temperature, and then the thermostat makes sure that your warm spot stays exactly the temperature that you need it to be, which minimizes the risk of burning your animal or causing any sort of fire or anything like that. And I also also mentioned this when we were talking about under the tank heating but thermometers no matter what I think you should always have a thermometer in your cage to make sure that your temperature is staying correct to make sure you can easily monitor it and make sure things are going smoothly this will help you know if either your bulb has burnt out or if your ceramic heat emitter is burnt out or if it's getting too warm or if you need to change things or whatever you should always have a thermometer measuring the hot spot in your tank so that you know if anything needs to be changed so these these were all of the things that I could think of for the video. I'm sure there are plenty more things to know. So if you guys have any additional tips on how to safely heat your animals enclosures, please leave them down in the comments below. I would appreciate that a ton. It would be super helpful to anyone who is looking for additional tips. So if you guys have any additional tips on how to safely heat your animals cages, please comment them below. That would be totally awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful to a lot of you. I know a ton of you out there own animals who require heating devices. So I really hope that you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I would also totally appreciate it if you checked out my social media such as my Instagram and Twitter. It will all be in the description below and I would love it if you guys gave me a follow on there. It would totally love to see you around. So make sure to do all of that and with all of that said thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful and I will see you all next time.